We'll be teaching you how to do the color meshing technique using the Wooly. So watch the instructional video to learn how to get professional looking results. When you're doing the color meshing technique with the Wooly, to have the greatest level of success, you'll want to choose your paint colors three to five shades apart. This is done by taking a look at a fan deck and choosing a color that you think you want your end result to be in the room as far as lightness and darkness. In this particular situation, I'm going to choose this color right here. From there, I'm going to go up two shades, one, two, and this will be the first color that I'm going to use. In order to choose my second color, I'll go back to my original color and drop down two shades. This will be my second color that I'll use. Ultimately, my end result will be somewhere in this tone. Now being that with color meshing, you can use between two and six colors in one coat. If you choose to add more accent colors, you'll want them to be on the same level as your darkest color. So you can choose more colors to make it all work. We're getting ready to do color meshing with the Wooly. Color meshing is unlike any other way of decoratively painting, so it's really a great thing that you're watching this video. What's unique about this is that no new base coat is required before you begin painting. So if you have builders flat on your wall, you're ready to go. Even if it's a color that you don't care for, don't worry about it. You do not need to put a base coat on the surface before you begin. Even if the wall has a primer coat on it, you can still do the color meshing technique on top of it. Now today we're going to use latex satin finish paints and we've chosen our paint colors three to five shades apart. We're going to use them directly out of the paint can. Now because different paint manufacturers make thicker and thinner paints, if when you're applying the, brush, the paint to the surface with the brush, if you find that it's a little thick or sticky, you can add one cup of water for every gallon of paint. You do not want to add glaze to this. If you're looking for using glazes to do your faux finishing, then you should move to the glazing portion on this video. Also, before you begin, you're going to want to prepare the Wooly tool. Now, the Wooly is made from natural sheepskin, and it's been cut into a pad before it's been applied to the handle. When natural sheepskin is cut, it actually begins to shed just a little bit. So when you have a brand new Wooly, you want to take the masking tape and wrap it around your hand, like so. By doing this, you want to have the sticky side on the outside. Then take the wooly, and what you're going to do is drag it across the sheepskin. What that does is it gets rid of any excess lint. Now, what's really great about this is that you only need to do this once with a brand new wooly. You won't ever need to do this again for any other rooms that you're going to paint that simple. Now we're actually going to move on to preparing the Wooly itself for paint. From there we're actually going to take the Wooly tool and wash it out before we begin painting. And we're going to rinse it out thoroughly and I don't use any soaps or anything like that. Just rinse it out so it gets moist. Then we'll take a towel or a paper towel and blot it dry. Fluff it up with our fingers and we're ready to begin to get it ready for painting. Now this is a little moist, but it's not soaking wet. Now we're going to prime the Wooly, and that's done by taking the paintbrush and incorporating all of the different colors that we'll be doing our faux finish on the wall with. Take my brush, and I'm gonna dip it in my first color, and apply it gently just to the tip of the sheepskin. I like to wrap the brush with the paint around around the edge because this is the area that's going to fit into the edges and corners. Now, we'll do that with all of the colors that we're going to be using in our faux finish. Now again, you'll only need to do this once before you begin painting. Once you've begun painting on the wall, you shouldn't need to rinse the wooly out or do anything else. So with that, now we get to get to the fun part, and that's the color meshing on the wall. 
Okay, now we get to get to the fun part. We get to take this plain white wall and make it look fabulous with the color meshing technique. Now the process begins with this big brush. And the reason why we use the big brush is because it moves the paint rapidly. I'm going to use the same brush for all of the colors that I'm going to use. I don't need to rinse it out or anything like that in between. It's, this is not a fussy process. So I take my big brush and I'm going to dip it into my first paint color. And I'm going to apply it to the surface in heavy splotches, like so. Now we're working on about a four foot by four foot area at a time. We're a little bit limited because of our window space here. But we've applied the paint in heavy splotches, such to the point that they're actually beginning to drip. That's an essential part of the process because if you apply your paints nice and even and smooth, that's not going to stay wet. This will stay wet. I'm going to take my same brush and dip it into my next color and apply more splotches. Now what we really look like we're trying to do here is break every rule for painting. And we probably are, but the outcome is fabulous. Now, as I'd mentioned, you only need to use two colors, but you can use as many as six. So I'm going to go ahead and add more paint color to the surface, so I'm going to add my third color. You don't need to have equal quantities of all the colors either. You can have a little bit more of one color or another color here or there. It's entirely up to you. Once my paint's on the surface, I'm going to go ahead and take my brush and spread the paint out. Now there's no special magic or talent required to do this. Anybody can do this. Now right now it looks like a big mess, but soon it's going to be beautiful. If you find yourself near an edge, a corner, or a ceiling line, just take your brush and run it along those areas. That's why we applied our masking tape, to protect those areas. Now comes the fun part. We're going to take the woolly, and we've already primed it. I'm going to take the woolly, and I'm just going to begin tapping. And what happens is the paint colors swirl together to create the illusion of depth and texture. It's important to know that there is no actual texture buildup happening on this wall. When the surface dries, it will still be smooth. How much you tap will determine the amount of texture illusion that you leave behind. So if you tap a little bit, it's going to be a little bit more textured looking. Tap it out more and it'll be more muted. Now if you'll notice the edge that we applied the paint on when we were priming the woolly, that snuggles right up into next to our edges and corners and ceiling lines. So we don't need to take other little tools to fit along these areas. Also too, you don't need to worry about how hard you're tapping or light. You don't need to worry about rotating while you tap. That's just not a factor with this technique. So I'm going to go ahead and tap it out. Now what happens sometimes is when you're working on a wall, you're rather close and it's hard to see what your end result looks like. So paint your area, stand back, take a look. Maybe there are certain areas that you'd like to tap out a little bit more or perhaps maybe you'd like to see a little bit more depth or texture illusion on there. That's easily done. Just take your brush and add more of one color or another color until you're happy with the end result. This is very forgiving. It is the fastest and easiest way to do decorative painting because no new base coats required. You can use two to six colors in one coat and no edging tools. Now, we're using regular latex wall paint. There are no glazes in this. What that means is, is that we can start and stop at any given point in the middle of a wall. For example, if I want to sit back and have a cup of coffee and watch the paint dry, I can do that. And it's okay if these edges dry out. Because we're using regular latex wall paint, you can do that. When you're ready to come back and paint the adjoining area in with it, it's ready for you. So I'm going to go ahead and continue painting the wall.
same brush, dip it into my next color, and apply more splotches. It's pretty hard to screw this one up, but if you are going to make a mistake, again, the biggest mistake that you're going to make is not applying enough paint to the surface where you actually see drips. It's kind of a strange concept at first if you've never done this technique before. Now watch closely. The paint actually begins to drip on the wall. So again, once my paint's on the surface, take the brush, spread the paint out. There's no magic or special talent required. If you find yourself along your edges or corners or ceiling lines, run your brush along there and spread it out. Now here's an area that we're we've already blended this area and we want to get the adjoining area to make a nice smooth transition. So you spread the paint out across that area where one area stops and starts. Then you're going to take the woolly and stipple it down so that it makes a nice transition. Like so. This way, you get professional looking results. You can't really see where you started and stopped. Now if you'll notice the edge, that snuggles right up into next to our edges and corners and ceiling lines. So we don't need to take other little tools to fit along these areas. The little woolly is designed for areas that you find that the big woolly doesn't fit. Some areas like this, oftentimes you'll find these in kitchens and bathrooms or behind door frames. Just simply apply your paint colors. If you want to, you can even use a small brush. Take the little woolly and I'm just going to begin tapping. There, now I'm happy. So, quick and easy way to do the color meshing process. The problem is, is that you need to choose your paint colors three to five shades apart. Oftentimes, people make the mistake of choosing one to two shades apart. Watch this portion of the video on how to choose the correct paint colors. When you're doing the color meshing technique with the woolly, to have the greatest level of success, you'll want to choose your paint colors three to five shades apart. This is done by taking a look at a fan deck and choosing a color that you think you want your end result to be in the room as far as lightness and darkness. In this particular situation, I'm going to choose this color right here. From there, I'm going to go up two shades, one, two, and this will be the first color that I'm going to use. In order to choose my second color, I'll go back to my original color and drop down two shades. This will be my second color that I'll use. Ultimately, my end result will be somewhere in this tone. Now being that with color meshing, you can use between two and six colors in one coat. If you choose to add more accent colors, you'll want them to be on the same level as your darkest color. So you can choose more colors to make it all work. The following video clip will show you how to touch up a particular area on your wall using the color meshing technique. This can be done when the surface is dry. But remember, your paints will dry darker. So when doing a touch up area, blend it, wait for it to dry to see your end results before you continue. Okay, so now I stood back and I took a look at the wall. And I think, really for the most part, it looks really good, as will, I'm sure, 
it will when you do your walls. But every once in a while, there's an area where you look at it and go, hmm, I'd like to make a change to the wall. Now right through here, I think it just needs a little bit of change. Now how that's done is a common mistake is people think that, that you should just take one color and add it once it's already begun drying. And that's not the situation. With this, you actually want to all, use all of the colors. So with that, I'm actually going to do that. Take my paintbrush and add all three paint colors. There's some harsh spots through here, so I'm going to go ahead and add these. Take my brush and spread the paint out. Then I'm going to take the woolly and blend it in. And what you want to do is make a soft transition of stippling it so it goes in and out. So that you make a nice transition over the area that you were painting or that you had done previously to the area that you're doing now. There, now I'm happy. So, quick and easy fixes to do the color meshing process. Cleanup is a snap. Simply turn on the warm water, take the woolly, and run it under the warm water. I find it helpful to run my fingers through the sheepskin to release the excess paint. This cleanup should take about three minutes to do. Never use soap on the woolly because it's made from natural sheepskin. Natural sheepskin has natural lanolin. Natural lanolin enables the woolly to be used again and again without becoming stiff or brittle. When you've sufficiently removed all of the paint from your painting project from the woolly, take your fingers and almost squeegee out the excess water. Take a cloth or a paper towel and remove all of the excess water. After this is done, you simply want to take your fingers and fluff up the woolly. It's okay to go ahead and use it on another painting project right away, or you can set it aside to air dry for future projects. The problem is, is that you may not be adding enough paint to the surface. Watch this portion of the video that shows how the paints are applied in really heavy splotches so that actually drips occur, then blend out and blend with the woolly. Again, the biggest mistake that you're going to make is not applying enough paint to the surface where you actually see drips. It's kind of a strange concept at first if you've never done this technique before. Now watch closely. The paint actually begins to drip on the wall. So again, once my paint's on the surface, take the brush, spread the paint out. There's no magic or special talent required. If you find yourself along your edges or corners or ceiling lines, run your brush along there. Then you're gonna take the woolly and stipple it down so that it makes a nice transition. If you'll notice the edge, that snuggles right up into next to our edges and corners and ceiling lines. So we don't need to take other little tools to fit along these areas. The answer to this question is you really should never need to wash the woolly out while working on your walls. The problem that may be occurring is you may be adding too much paint to the surface with the brush. Watch this portion of the video in a situation where the woolly is actually oversaturated 
and how to solve the problem. One mistake that, that you can make is by adding too much paint to the surface. This is easy to tell because you'll, when you take the woolly and you begin tapping out, you'll actually see drip marks that will begin to form on the wall. Also, too, your woolly will become saturated with paint. If that's the situation, don't worry. Just take it over to a portion of the wall that you haven't painted yet. Download some of that paint on the wall. And then come back in and tap out. Take a moment to watch this portion of the video on how to do the edges, corners, and ceiling line using the woolly to blend these areas. When done properly, you should get professional looking results. So I'm going to go ahead and continue painting the wall. So again, once my paint's on the surface, take the brush, spread the paint out. There is no magic or special talent required. If you find yourself along your edges or corners or ceiling lines, run your brush along there and spread it out. Then you're going to take the woolly and stipple it down so it makes a nice transition. Now if you'll notice the edge, that snuggles right up into next to our edges and corners and ceiling lines. So we don't need to take other little tools to fit along these areas. This way, you get professional looking results. The little woolly is designed for areas that you find that the big woolly doesn't fit. Some areas like this, oftentimes you'll find these in kitchens and bathrooms or behind door frames. Just simply apply your paint colors. If you want to, you can even use a small brush. Take the little woolly, and I'm just going to begin tapping. Hi, I'm Barbie, creator of the Woolly line of decorative paint tools. Thanks for watching our instructional video. Watching this will give you professional looking results, and I hope you have as much fun watching it as we did making it.